Hello guys and welcome to our Counter Strike Go or Counter Strike Global Offensive running in 12K resolution on a laptop that is equipped with the Core i7 7700HQ 7th generation CPU and GeForce GTX 1070 video card and 12 gigabyte of DDR4 uh, system RAM. The GTX 1070 video card guys with the GDDR5 8 gigabyte of VRAM. Guys, keep in mind in the menu it's kind of 3 5 FPS, but in the gameplay at 12K resolution is going to be improved dramatically. Okay, this is going to be the first YouTube video uploaded to the YouTube. 12K resolution running on the laptop, guys. Rendered in real time in Counter Strike Go. Keep that in mind. I'm also going to show you 12K resolution, 10K resolution, 8K resolution, 5K resolution, and 4K resolution, and 1080p. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going, guys. So go ahead and grab yourself a, a tea or your favorite drink, and it's going to be in a snack. It's going to be a long video, but during this long video, we're going to discuss a lot of great, valuable information about the ultra high resolution so um video right now it's set to 12k resolution and it's rendering 12k resolution guys in real time and then it's down sampling to 8k resolution let me go ahead and show it to you 11,520 by 6,480 pixels. This is 12K resolution, 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio. Country Shake Go presets completely maxed out, except the anti-aliasing is off. Let's go ahead and have a look. Oh, even enable the anti-aliasing. Let's go ahead and make it off, guys. We don't want no anti-aliasing. We're already struggling to run it at 12K resolution. But the purpose of this video, guys, is not the gameplay. The purpose of this video is not the pixel comparison. The purpose of this video, guys, is to show you. It's a computer science video to show you what is possible with the Pascal GP architecture in the video card GTX 1070. And this GTX 1070 video card, guys, in this laptop, having the updated GP104 GPU Pascal GP architecture that is running faster and performing faster than GTX 1070 in the desktop. Keep that in mind. But in the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and share with you the PC hardware information about this laptop. And let's go ahead and get going here, guys. Okay? So everything maxed out, guys. Maxed out visuals, 12K resolution. We're going to play a um, demo from 2016 Grand Final that I'm going to play on any of my Constrike benchmarks since 2019. Okay, I already showed you our two RTX 2080 Ti in this live video card, 16K resolution, the first 16K resolution rendered gameplay construct uh, with all the performance stats at the left top on the YouTube in the 2019. Go ahead and check out the iPlay4K.com or iPlay16K.com YouTube channel. And you're going to enjoy it, guys. So I'm going to show you Grand Final uh, Match 103 on the train uh, when um, the SK Gaming versus the Team Liquid <laughs> Grand, uh, grand uh, Final Match. We're going to go ahead and play it. And same match, same map, same demo I'm going to use in all of my on two RTX, Titan RTX in the slide is coming in the end of 2018 is going to be amazing and 16k resolution don't forget to check it out because 16k resolution is 133 uh, megapixels or 134 megapixels rendered in real time all right let me remove the the hood so i'm going to use the command i press the console and i'm going to use the command cl underscore draw hood together space Zero. Enter. Okay, who disappeared? And I'm going to go ahead and uh, reload the demo real quick. <laughs> Let me real quick go ahead and uh, quit the demo. And I'm going to reload the demo like this. And uh, here we go. And this is how we're going to bench it. On this guy's demo file, I'm going to include this demo file in the video description. If you're looking with instructions how to use it in your Counter-Strike Go or Counter-Strike Global Offensive, 
go ahead and download this demo file so you can bench and you can see how faster or how slower your computer versus this laptop today or versus my ultra high fastest computers ever on YouTube with the two Titan RTX in SLI, with the two G uh, RTX 2080 Ti in SLI, with two GTX 1080 Ti in SLI, etc, etc, etc. Guys, please keep your eye at the left top corner. There's a valuable information over there. And self-explanatory, I have the VRAM frequency, which is 8000 megahertz on our GTX 1070 video card. VRAM usage, the total usage is allowed 8,129 megabytes. And keep in mind, sometimes 128 megabytes utilized by the operating system. So pretty much you don't want to go above 8,000 megabytes for sure. Otherwise, you're overloading your VRAM and NVIDIA your driver realize that and instead of crashing the game it's pretty much going to store the data into the system ram and system ram that i'm using today ddr4 2400 megahertz in this laptop 12 gigabyte is four times slower than gdr5 vram in the gtx 1070 video card so it's going to lag it's going to show low fps and it's going to show high latency delay in terms of milliseconds so then I have the temperature in the GPU, GPU load, which is 99% excellent GPU load actually, actually, and then GPU frequency, which is 1544 MHz, 15. 82 megahertz then i have the fps fps we want to keep as high as possible uh then i have the latency delay the latency delay between rendering of each frame and it's uh, causing by the delay of the uh, utilization of the and how fast the gpu vram system ram cpu and the software such as the uh, directx 9 api so pretty much that delay between them, between hardware and software causing and showing us the delay between each frame rendered, which is very high right now, 50 milliseconds average, as you can see, 45, I would say 47 milliseconds average. And in any game to keep your gameplay comfortable, you want to have below 10 milliseconds and your gameplay will be silky smooth. But also comfortable will be below 20 milliseconds in Counter-Strike Go, uh, but when the delay is uh, above 30 milliseconds it's uncomfortable um to play keep that in mind but it, it is benchable and we can test it so we can compare it with the future hardware so do you understand what's the purpose of this so i'm going to compare it with the two rtx 2080 ti with a single rtx 2080 ti and uh, with a single Titan RTX, with the two Titan RTX and SLI, also with the GTX 1080, GTX 1080 Ti, with the Titan XP, with the uh, four Titan X Maxwell GPU architecture and video cards and SLI. All these videos are available over iPlay4K.com and also I'm going to go ahead and split the screen and show you some things. So we're going to uh, analyze the data and we're going to pretty much have a nice conversations, intellectual conversations based on the data. And uh, this is guys, no marketing BS, the real story over here, rendered in real time without any editing as you can see. Great, great, great. All right, so average I would say will be, mm, it's hard to say, 25 to 30 FPS average with the latency delay 45 milliseconds, okay? With the CPU usage, uh, below 10 percent uh, with the system RAM usage um, 8400 megabytes and with the VRAM usage 7500 megabytes below 8000 megabytes but I already believe there is a possibility that maybe 500 or even one gigabyte of the data loaded into the system RAM instead of our VRAM because the system RAM usage is very high as you can see right now it just went to 9000 megabytes and it was kind of lack as you saw and i believe it just the nvidia driver just loaded a lot of data about 501 one gigabyte of data into the system ram instead of this vram and just just because it doesn't show the vram above 8000 megabytes it doesn't mean that we're not overloading our vram i'm pretty sure that we're overloading our vram and by about one gigabyte okay but we're going to find out when i'm going to test it with the titan rtx or just go ahead and watch the video but the, that video will be only in 16k resolution on a single rtx 2080 ti but with the titan rtx single video card i'm going to show you all kind of different resolutions okay 
so we're going to find out but i'm pretty sure at 12k resolution at high right now we're overloading our vram is probably like 8500 megabytes on the vram that's why the system ram is that high the system ram should be below 8000 megabytes okay makes sense guys i'm going to quit on that and uh, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to load 10K resolution next. Keep in mind, guys, that today this video I'm recording with the Shadow Play. It's an NVIDIA software recording on the same computer and consuming some resources. So please add three FPS to the FPS counter to get the FPS without the recording with the Shadow Play, just like I, I just regular playing it. Okay. So uh, 10,880 pixels by. Um, 5,760 pixels, so 10K resolution, 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio. Let's go ahead and apply that with the maxed out visuals. Of course, we can play 12K resolution if I'm going to lower everything at low, and FPS will be nice, but um, there is no point for that, okay? Because we're going to test it against the future uh, video cards and I want to kind of run it as high as possible so the future video card is not going to be running into the FPS cap so hopefully that makes sense as you can see it takes some time to reload 12k resolution to 10k resolution and it's not an easy process it takes some time hopefully it didn't freeze on us Come on. Very high resolution, take some time. Okay, I don't want that flickering. Oh my god. Here we go. Yeah, that, that flickering at the full screen, guys. This is what's going on. Sometimes it's flickers. Okay, oh okay. Okay, it disappeared. Thanks God, but sometimes it doesn't doesn't disappear. That's why I'm running window mode or or borderless window mode. Just want to let you know. So uh, let me real quick go ahead and reboot this uh, demo real quick. We're going to go ahead and reboot the demo. So this is going to be. Let's go ahead and verify the resolution. It's going to be um, as you can see, 10K resolution, 10,880 pixels by 5,760 pixels. Everything will be maxed out. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and load the demo now. Same demo. Keep your eyes, guys, on the VRAM load because it's going to be decreased probably. And the system uh, uh, RAM load is also going to decrease. And if it's going to be decreased, it means that we were pretty much offloading some data from the VRAM and loading this data to the system RAM based on the NVIDIA driver prediction. So the game is not going to crash. So by, by the iPlay 4K, aka iPlay 16K formula, guys, uh, to for you to find out um, that you're not offloading the data from a VRAM to system RAM, I, I would like to suggest you to keep 15% free of the VRAM constantly all the time. 15% out of your 100% uh, capacity of the VRAM. So let's say if you have 11 gigabyte of VRAM on the RTX 2080 Ti, or future video cards or GTX 1080 Ti, you want to make sure that you loading VRAM below 10,000 megabytes or below 10 gigabytes. Otherwise, the driver will make a decision and prediction and sometimes it's incorrect and sometimes it's just going to load the, the offload the data from the VRAM and load it into the system RAM when there is no necessary for that. And uh, it pretty much what's, what's going to happen is going to lower your FPS and it's going to increase your latency delay in milliseconds okay so the gameplay is not going to be as smooth as silky so to keep it beautifully you want to make sure that 15% of VRAM is cons constantly all the time is free and um, at that resolution that you're trying to play and this is the best scenario guys but just because i'm benchmarking i'm testing i'm not going to use this formula and i'm going to utilize completely my resources and we're just going to see where we at in 2019 this video is recorded 12k resolution was running on the laptop in 2019 guys on the pascal gpu architecture laptop and it's not top of the end video card the top of the end pascal gpu architecture laptop was msi gt 83 vr 
car that uh, had the two GTX 1080 in the SLI video cards, Pascal GP architecture, that was the, the king. And it's still the king in 2019, in the whole 2018. And there is no such a laptop with two RTX 2080 Ti in SLI. So two GTX 1080 uh, in SLI video cards will dominate RTX 2080 uh, in SLI, uh, will dominate single RTX 2080 video card in a laptop, keep that in mind. But it, it, it's a middle grade uh, in terms of graphic performance laptop and it's amazing performance as you can see. The reason why I selected this laptop because the performance similar to Titan X Maxwell GPU architecture or GTX 9, 980 Ti video card. Actually it's equal GTX 980 Ti video card or even a little bit slower by hair slower than laptop with RTX 2060 video cards, keep that in mind. With the RTX 2060 laptops that unfortunately is not going to be equipped with the eight gigabyte of VRAM. If it would be equipped with eight gigabyte of VRAM, your performance will be three, four FPS higher that you can see right now. But RTX 2060 uh, laptops is not going to be great above 4K resolution. So keep that in mind, guys. This laptop will be better in 4K resolution and above than RTX 2060 laptop. Especially at 5K resolution and above, the GTX 1070 laptop will be better due to higher VRAM capacity, 8 gigabyte of VRAM. So here we go, guys. As you saw it, okay, as you saw that VRAM usage was below 7,000 megabytes. So right now I can say uh, safely that we're probably not offloading our VRAM data into the system RAM. And pretty much we just show the uh, const constantly the FPS performance that it should be. And as you can see, my system RAM. Uh, decreased to 7500 megabytes the cpu usage is increased a little bit by few percentage and the gpu usage is excellent 97 percent but it was much better at 12k resolution the higher resolution the better gpu utilization or gpu usage and we want to keep the gpu usage 97 percent and above and the cpu usage we want to keep below 92 percent keep that in mind when your cpu usage is reaching 92 percent it means that you need to get the better CPU with a higher core count. Keep that in mind. But this quad core 8 thread CPU is just excellent. Okay, I didn't see any 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 problems on the CPU. As you can see, with the usage below 25%, we're still Gucci. So I'm going to go ahead, guys, and quit this right now. And I'm going to switch the resolution. I'm going to apply the AK resolution now. And this is, guys, with the maximum. Maximum visuals without the anti-aliasing at 10k resolution. Keep that in mind. Uh, let me real quick. Uh, probably not. Probably not. I just to to try it at low. Everything at low. Or maybe let's go ahead and try everything at low at 10k resolution. Just just in case. And then I'm going to try everything at low 8k resolution, and then I'm going to try 8k resolution everything at maxed out. So go ahead and grab yourself a nice drink. A nice snack because do not use an alcohol, guys. Alcohol is very bad for your health. And uh, um, it's going to be a longer video than it's supposed to, but it's going to be very informative video. So don't forget to smash that like button for that. And uh, yeah. Oh, look at this. We were using some anti-aliasing. Oh my goodness. I don't want no anti-aliasing as again disabled. Uh, let's let's go ahead and try. No, let's go ahead and dis disregard this. Let's go ahead and without the anti-aliasing, let's see. I don't think the F FXA took any performance, but let's go ahead and have a look without the anti-aliasing, actually. Let me come back and play without the anti-aliasing. This is what's with, with, with the anti-aliasing, but FXAA method of anti-aliasing is not my favorite because pretty much it's blurring the pixels um, in terms of creating the anti-aliasing, and it's blurring pretty badly. And I, I like the MSAA, much better than FXAA. FXAA doesn't tax your GPU performance pretty much in terms of FPS, but it's kind of ugly and I do not prefer to use it. I, I like to stay away from uh, from the FXAA or to use MSAA if enabled and my video card is allows me to use, otherwise no anti-aliasing. 
same 10k guys same uh maximum visuals but anti-aliasing is off this time 26 fps average as you can see increase on the system ram just a little bit to 7800 megabytes and uh, the the um VRAM actually decreased to 6500 megabytes by about 100 megabytes decreased I would say the CPU usage below 15% check it out and the uh, the GPU usage is 97-98% great GPU utilization As you can see, the CPU is not thermal throttling yet because the temperature is 80 Celsius and I down volted my CPU by 0 0.97 volts. So it decreased the temperature by 2 Celsius. Uh, but everything else in this laptop is stock. I didn't overclock my VRAM. I didn't overclock my GPU. I didn't overclock my CPU. But this 7700 HQ CPU has locked multiplier, so it's not overclockable CPU. But you can overclock the GPU and you can overclock the VRAM to receive an extended plus 3 FPS extra to the FPS counter. But you got to replace the thermal compound. And I didn't replace the thermal compound yet on this laptop. You got to use the Thermal Grizzly liquid metal thermal paste. And this thermal paste will lower the CPU temperature by about 10 Celsius and GPU temperature by about 10 Celsius. So you can overclock your GPU and VRAM and increase the FPS by about 3 FPS. Keep in mind, as again, I'm recording this video today with the NVIDIA Shadow Play, so please add 3 FPS to the FPS counter. So 37, 38 FPS, above 30 FPS, so pretty much it's it's playable, guys. And But latency delay is kind of like 30 FPS and sometimes going, going to, uh, I mean, 30 milliseconds latency delay and sometimes going to 45 milliseconds jumping. So it's, it's not that comfortable to play like that, but it's comfortable to bench, it's benchable. And it's playable, but it's not comfortable, okay? But for the old school gamers, it's probably going to be comfortable. Because it's uh, when it's above 30 FPS, but right now it was 25, 27 FPS. So it's kind of average, I would say, 30 FPS at 10K without the anti-aliasing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and create this now, and I'm going to switch to low, and I also want to try the 12K resolution to low. Let's go ahead and do that. What the heck? It's going to be a long video anyways for now, because I'm going to try all kind of presets for you, so it's going to be about 50 minutes video, guys. Go ahead and smash that like button. I'm not going to upload it in 8K resolution. I'm going to just going to upload it 4K resolution for you to watch it because the the size of the video probably will be 29 gigabytes in hevc in video codec compressed 4k resolution so everything will be maxed out guys okay as you can see now everything at low and we will come back to the maxed out and the 8k resolution everything at low let's go ahead and try like this at 10k resolution and then back again to 12k resolution and then i'm going to back it up to 8k resolution and then i will increase everything at maximum possible visuals at 8k resolution and uh, i will try four times msa at 8k resolution because eight times msa at 8k resolution is pretty much freezing everything and it's overloading our vram but four times msa at 8k resolution is still possible with eight gigabytes of vram without the shadow player recording we will find out with the shadow player recording if it will be possible because shadow player recording is an nvidia technology and pretty much it's utilizing the gpu and a little bit of vram a little bit of gpu and a little bit of vram so everything uh, at low as you can see 10k resolution let's go ahead and run the benchmark guys is again i'm going to include the demo file of this grand final so you can play it exact the same demo file and i'm going to do the split screens guys in 2020 comparing rtx 2080 ti versus the titan rtx's it's going to be a great video for you to watch but if you're not subscriber to iplay4k.com youtube channel go ahead and subscribe it guys because a lot of great videos will be available for you in the future iplay4k.com or iplay16k.com but I advise you to go ahead and subscribe to iPlay4K.com, my main YouTube channel, where I'm uploading both 4K resolution and 16K, 8K resolution, 10K, 12K resolution, and sometimes 1080p, but mostly I'm focused on the ultra high HD resolutions. 
Okay, so low, 10K resolution. Look at that. The VRAM usage, still 6,500 megabytes. So it's, it's pretty much for the Pascal GPU architecture, it's not that big deal in the Counter-Strike Go uh, in this particular game. At low presets or at uh, higher presets, at maximum presets without the anti-aliasing or at, at lowest presets without the anti-aliasing, pretty much it's going to utilize almost the same uh, capacity of the VRAM as you can see. But the visuals, actually was better at the everything maxed out without the anti-aliasing of course but still that not that bad at the at, at, at everything at low as you can see we increasing in terms of the fps guys right now we're comfortable 40 fps average as you can see and we decrease in the latency delay so we make it below 30 milliseconds latency delay so right now it's comfortable i don't see latency delay like in 40 milliseconds because 40 milliseconds definitely not comfortable so we decrease latency delay which is nice we increase on the fps so right now it's kind of comfortable for all the old school cool gamers and uh, the system RAM as you can see is 7,271 megabytes the uh, CPU usage will be below 15% which is nice and GPU usage will be still high 96-97% which is also great uh, GPU utilization okay that's great I think guys don't you think yeah, I think this was a great performance over here going on. And of course, the heavy smoke, the heavy uh, volumetric particles will bring it down a little bit, but it's still comfortable at when it's 40 FPS average. 40, 41, I would say 42 FPS average, and without the recording, it's probably going to be 45 FPS average. And now, 45 FPS average for the classic gamer, I call it comfortable gameplay for myself. But not for a lot of people, but for myself. Some people even don't call 60 FPS comfortable, but you know, it's up to you guys. Okay, guys, and uh, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and switch it now. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to 12K resolution at low with the same settings, and then we're going to go ahead and get back to the 8K resolution, get back to the business, get back to the regular uh, gamers, but still uh, considered as extreme in 2020 because they're playing 8K resolution, but not... I play 4K, AK, I play 8K, AK, I play 16K, keep that in mind. So 12K resolution, 16 divided by 9 is spec ratio, 11,520 pixels by 6,480 pixels. As you can see, everything will be low, everything at maximum possible low through the uh, options. Guys, this game is vanilla. I didn't modify any settings under the console except the CL underscore draw hood uh, space zero. And to enable hood, you got a, a space one instead of zero. My desktop resolution today is set to 8K resolution, as you can see. Guys, a lot of classic games coming in 16K resolution over the iPlay4K.com YouTube channel on this laptop and on very big lab, uh, systems such as two RTX 2080 Ti or Titan RTXs and two of them in a slot. It's just amazing. Okay, it's flickering, 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 but hopefully it's going to wake up. Come on. Should, should wake up, man. <laughs> Please. This is what I don't like. When you're switching in those high resolutions, above 8K especially, sometimes, especially 16K, sometimes a lot of flickering in a lot of games. But I never, never experienced flickering uh, in any other games at 12K resolution. Only the country I go Okay, guys, come on, just stop flickering. Should we reload the game? Should I go to the desktop and back to the game again? Let's go ahead and try that. Maybe it's going to help us.
that's why I'm running Counter-Strike Go sometimes in the window mode or full uh, full screen window mode or borderless window mode. Come on, man. Stop flickering, please. It's still flickering, guys. Yeah, look like... I think... What's going on here? I think we gotta reload the whole game, guys, real quick. This is what we're gonna do real quick. I'm apologizing about it and probably I'm not gonna cut it because I'm not gonna edit this video, guys. We're gonna just go ahead and close the game and we're going to reinitialize the uh, 3D surface under Direct X, A X API. And it's even better. It's going to show. It's going to offload some unused VRAM, unused system RAM. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. What's going on now? Here we go. And let me go ahead and run it. Construct go. Come on. Guys, I recorded the left for that on this laptop in 12k resolution go ahead and check it out it's also running source game engine and half-life 2 which is the earliest source game engine up to 16k resolution on the laptop but it's not the first video 16k resolution of half-life 2 on the laptop i recorded the first one back in 2016 or 2017 i believe on the laptop that was equipped with the gtx 1080 video card Half-Life 2 and 16K resolution. Here we go. We're getting to the 12K resolution. As you saw, my 8K resolution desktop screen was changed to 12K resolution kind of real quick before it loaded up the Direct 3D surface in 12K resolution under DirectX API. This is 12K resolution, guys. Everything at low. Let's go ahead and have a look, shall we? Can't check go or... Uh, Construct Global Offensive, whatever you want to call it, guys. So, 3 FPS, of course, this is in the menu. Okay, and uh, video. Kind of slow, but 3 FPS is better than 1 FPS. 1 FPS is kind of ridiculous, even in the menu, but 3 FPS is nice. We still can, many, you know, go through through the menu to the game, and game should be like solid FPS. So everything at low, as you can see, everything ma minimum possible visuals, 12K resolution, 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio. Let's go ahead and load um, our demo file. Okay, and uh, guys, I'm going to broadcast this Inferno this beautiful match that was just before this demo file on two rtx 20 uh, i mean on two titan rtx's in 16k resolution and i will try to broadcast some of the construct go beautiful grand finals uh from 2016 2017 2018 2019 and 2020 in 16k resolution so don't mess it out it's going to be a great videos over the iplay4k.com youtube channel all right so we're loading guys 12k resolution 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio if i'm not mistaken let me calculate how many pixel it is on my iphone real quick but um pretty much if i'm not mistaken we're looking at so it's 11,520 by 6840. We're looking at 78 megapixels when we're playing 12K. Okay, hold on. CL draw hood space zero. Here we go. And uh, so 78 megapixels, and when I'm playing 10K resolution, which is uh, 10,000, 520, right? By, no, 10,000, 
10,880 pixels by 5760 pixels, 10K resolution is 62 megapixels. So 12K resolution is 75 megapixels, guys. And 16K resolution is whopping 134 megapixels or 133 megapixels, whatever you want to call it. Almost double. Can you believe it? 16K resolution almost double than 12K resolution. So we definitely cannot run 16K resolution on this laptop because we are already at 12K resolution, everything at low, as you can see, we are above 7,000 megabytes or above 7 gigabytes of VRAM. I think right now, guys, as you can see, we're below on system RAM, we're below 8,000 megabytes. I think right now we're probably running healthy VRAM and we are not offloading any data of the VRAM into the system RAM, I think. Because as you can see, my even my milliseconds delay is kind of healthy too. It's kind of in 30 milliseconds average and the FPS, guys, is above 30 FPS. Wow. Look at that CPU utilization and look at that GPU utilization. The higher resolution, the crazier GPU utilization becomes. And this is what we want. Unfortunately, I want to see this GPU utilization at the 4K resolution, but NVIDIA is not giving us. And I believe this is the NVIDIA driver AI that controls that, trying to save us some energy bill and stuff like that. But when we're not utilizing 97% of the GPU and above, we're pretty much wasting our um, CUDA cores on our GPU every second towards nothing. And uh, so this is for, for your consideration for your screen, what kind of video card you're looking because you're not looking to get the top of the line Titan RTX and play 1080p at the country I go because pretty much you will uh, waste uh, about at least about 30% of the CUDA cores for nothing every second that you're playing can shake go keep that in mind So you want to buy a cheaper video card Otherwise you want to buy yourself a better screen if you buy a Titan RTX Otherwise, what is the sense? Or if you have a plans in the future to buy a better screen in the future like six months or eight months Then probably yeah, go ahead and buy yourself Titan RTX Otherwise, go ahead and buy yourself maybe RTX 2070 if you play in 1080p, guys. Or even uh, RTX 2060 for 1080p and Construct Go will be up to 4K resolution, will be good to go. And you don't need anything better than that. Okay, that's beautiful. So this was 12K resolution. Everything was at low. You saw the uh, pretty much the average FPS was, guys, uh, like 34, 35 FPS average, as you can see. And our CPU utilization was uh, all the time average, like below 15%. And the GPU utilization was 97, 95-97% average. The VRAM utilization was... Uh, 7100 megabytes and uh, the system RAM utilization was 7800 megabytes okay pretty much we saw everything what we need to see guys all right let's go ahead and switch it now so we're going to switch to AK resolution now and AK resolution, this is probably well, it's going to be chocolate candy, guys, I think, even on the GTX 1070. Let's go ahead and have a look, shall we? So everything is low. I'm going to go ahead and switch to AK resolution, which is 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio, which is 7,680 pixels by 4,320 pixels. Everything still will be at low. This is how we want it. And then I'm going to enable everything at maximum possible visuals without the anti-aliasing. And then I'm going to enable four times MSA. I believe it is still going to be Gucci at four times MSA with AK resolution on GTX 1070 laptops. Guys, pretty much this performance that you see today is equal to any laptop that is equipped with GTX 1070 video cards, any desktop that is equipped with GTX 980 Ti video cards, any desktop that is equipped with a single Titan X Maxwell GPU architecture video cards, um, any desktop that is equipped with the art, uh, not RTX 2060 up to 
5k resolution after that say nope nope for the RTX 2060 VRAM overload so low 8k resolution let's go ahead and have a look shall we Guys, I'm losing my voice. I gotta record a lot of videos with two RTX, uh, Titan RTXs in this live for you. It's coming out in the year of 2018 and hopefully my voice will be nice because I recorded already so, so many videos on the iOS uh, devices in the mobile gaming on my iPhone, on my iPads. And right now I'm finishing up with this laptop and the next videos will be Titan RTXs, guys. All right, look at this crazy fast FPS above 60 FPS 8K resolution in the laptop. Yeah, guys, this is unbelievable. So similar performance you will receive 8K resolution with the GTX 980 Ti video card, Pascal, I mean Maxwell GPR architecture video cards in the desktops. Wow, 70 FPS average. Wow, look at that. The milliseconds delay be below 20 milliseconds average, which means that right now it's comfortable, guys. For Counter Strike, below 20 milliseconds comfortable, but of course, for any games, below 10 milliseconds is extremely comfortable, ultra comfortable. Look at that, 70 FPS average without the uh, recording with the Shadow Play at 3 FPS to the FPS counter. Um, the CPU utilization below 20%, still very low on the CPU utilization, which is nice. And this is the quad core 8 thread, so 8 virtual cores in the Windows, guys. The GPU utilization went a little bit lower from 97.95 to 95 uh, to 92-95%. So we decreased on our GPU load, GPU usage by about 2-3%. And this is not nice, but this is AK at low. I'm pretty sure AK at high, everything maxed out without the anti-aliasing will be 97-98%. And AK with four times MSA, we're probably going to be screamed like 99%. On this GTX 1070 Pascal GPU architecture in this laptop today. By the way, this laptop that I'm using today, ASUS GL702VS, um, keep that in mind. If you have a laptop that is thinner than ASUS GL702VS with a GTX 1070 video card, your temperature will be even higher than that. If you have a MSI Dominators, it's a thicker laptop than my ASUS GL702VS. So your temperature could be a little bit lower even stock to stock. Keep that in mind by about 3-4 Celsius on GPU and on CPU under the MSI Dominators because MSI Dominators kind of thick laptops it's, those kind of laptops is great as a workstations and sometimes if you're moving so you want to take your workstation with you but not all the time that's a great great laptops MSI Dominators one of the best guys because they have great cooling systems in them they're not Thin, so it's a great airflow on them and if you going to especially replace the thermal compound in MSI Dominator is going to last you seven ten years guys if you're going to buy in 2020 it's going to last you till 2025 and in 2025 I believe the PC gaming will be dead console gaming will be dead we'll be playing on the iOS mobile devices or we'll be playing on the Android devices or iOS devices but we will be streaming games through the streaming services in 2025 so PC gaming and console gaming 2025 will be dead if you're watching this re video in 2025 go ahead and smash that like button and let's see if my prediction is correct I believe in 2025 only about 3-5% of the uh, computer game gamers will be on the PC or console platforms. Everybody else will be on iOS mobile devices when Apple will release a Bionic chip, I believe a 17 or a 19 Bionic chip in 2025 when the it's going to feature a 16 core on CPU, 32 cores on the Naren cores and 64 cores as a, a GPU cores and it will be game over for the PC gaming guys.
because the Apple mobile devices will be capable to play any games at 4K resolutions easy during that time. And it will cost like half of the PC device and the life of the Apple mobile devices will be also uh, extended by two, three times over the PC uh, hardware gaming life cycle will be increased on the mobile devices by two, three times. Keep that in mind. So guys, as we saw, the average FPS will be actually 70-75 FPS average. Milliseconds delay will be below 20 milliseconds delay average, even below 15 milliseconds delay average. And uh, the CPU usage will be below 15%. The VRAM usage will be uh, 5,500 megabytes average. The system RAM usage will be 6,500 megabytes. So I can uh, safely say that VRAM usage is healthy. We are not offloading any data to the system RAM from the VRAM. And the uh, the GPU usage will be, as you can see, 92-95%. We decreased by 2-3% from 12K at low. Okay, let's go ahead and switch it now and I'm going to real quick go ahead and try it. Everything maxed out without the anti-aliasing and then 8K resolution everything maxed out with the anti-aliasing. Let's go ahead and do that. And then 4K resolution and everything maxed out and then 1080p everything maxed out and then 1080p everything at low for those crazy people that likes to play like that that enjoy enjoying just the facts. Okay, guys, uh, everything maxed out, as you can say, right? Yep. Let's go ahead and save that. No anti-aliasing, though, and uh, let's go ahead and play it like this. Come on, come on. I hope that shadow play is still recording. Look at that little shadow play icon at the left top corner. At 8K resolution, at 12K resolution, it was even smaller than that. It was like so hard to see. It was like a little green dot. That little icon that Shadow Play is recording at the left top corner. Okay, everything is maxed out, 8K resolution. However, there is no anti aliasing yet. Let's go ahead and check it out, guys. Same demo. It's going to be interesting. results probably but let's go ahead and have a look without the anti-aliasing maxed out 8k resolution on just single gtx 1070 in the laptop guys seventh generation i7 7700 hq cpu that is not overclockable that has lock multipliers let's go ahead and have a look shall we all right fps 40 fps look like average the delay, milliseconds delay, is above 20 milliseconds, but it's still below 30 milliseconds, so it's still comfortable to play, and it's most definitely that it's playable condition for sure. Not for all gamers though, but you can compete like this. Below 30 milliseconds latency delay, you can compete, guys. And 45 FPS average for me is comfortable for the old school classic gamer. Of course, of course very comfortable for me, 60 FPS and above. Okay, guys, as you can see, wow, average even jumped to 51 FPS, even to 60 FPS. Look at this. The VRAM usage is below 6,000 megabytes, but I'm pretty sure it's going to grow to like 6,100 megabytes. So right now it's below 6 gigabytes. And the system RAM usage is uh, 6,700 megabytes. So I'm pretty sure that we're not offloading any data from our VRAM. I'm pretty sure that VRAM functionality is healthy. And this is the maximum performance under the GTX 1070 video card Pascal GP architecture um, with the 8K resolution maxed out, guys. So average FPS will be 45-55 FPS, isn't it? Let's go ahead and have a look. 
a little bit longer and I will go ahead and switch it to four times MSAA. As you can see, without the MSAA, we still have some room to go and uh, I'm not going to apply this rule 15% of the VRAM should be free. I'm just going to go ahead and load as much as possible because as again, this is a benchmark, this is a test. Uh, we just want to see the maximum. Wow, 45 dash guys, 60 FPS average and a jumping. Amazing. But the average on the latency delay didn't jump to 40 milliseconds. I never saw it. So pretty much the gameplay will be comfortable. The CPU utilization jumped to 25% as you can see. As maximum as I saw it right now during this resolution and these settings. But the GPU utilization 95% average so and 90 95-97 so my prediction was right okay so here we go guys let's go ahead and uh, shut it down and now i'm going to apply the anti-aliasing so i'm pretty sure that two times anti-aliasing will be around like 7200 four times anti-aliasing will be around like 7600 something like that and maybe not healthy for the VRAM, so maybe we're going to offload already offload some data to the system RAM. But let's go ahead and have a look. Prediction move and uh, theories are not what is in real life. Let's go ahead and have a look the real life. So anti-aliasing, guys. Four times MSAA. Wow. Please take it. Please take it. Please take it. Please take it. Do not crash it. Do not crash it. Took it and took it fast means that maybe even the VRAM is healthy utilization over here. So four times MSAA guys, 7,680 pixels by 4,320 pixels, 16 divided by nine aspect ratio, 8K resolution, everything more maxed out, four times MSAA. Let's go ahead and play it. Let's go ahead and have a look, shall we? The shadow play is still recording guys, still recording. If it's going to cut me, guys, I'm not going to re-record this video. I will just upload it the way it is. If you're not going to record 1080p, I'm apologizing, but I plan it. But as again, this is for those low-budget gamers, just to show them what if you're going to buy this type of laptop or any type of laptop with the Core i7, 7 uh, generation and GTX 1070 off the eBay a uh, used but like new condition maybe a battery that but you don't care about the battery if it's a gaming laptop most likely you still you, you still going to play on the AC because on the battery performance is horrible so are you going to play on the AC and uh, what will be your performance your performance will be just the same as you seeing right now on the screen guys on any laptop equipped with GTX 1070 video card. Look at that. The with the four times MSAA, our VRAM is 7,000 megabytes, exactly seven gigabytes. I'm pretty sure it's going to increase to 7,100 megabytes when we're going to load more level of details, more data in the cache of our VRAM as a frame buffer, but. We're going to pay cash it into the VRAM, the fast pay cash. But the system RAM is still below 7,000 megabytes, so I, guys, I can consume that our VRAM load is healthy, and we're not storing any data into the system RAM. And this is impressive. Look at this. The below, still below 30 milliseconds latency delay with four times MSAA, AK resolution, maximum visuals. This is unbelievable. And the FPS, look at this, four times MSA or no MSA in Construct Go or Construct Global Offensive doesn't do that much difference in the Pascal GPU architecture and the video card GTX 1070. The FPS is still 45 dash. Uh, 70 FPS average healthy as you can see. Wow! Unbelievable and trying fast. Look at that milliseconds delay right now, even below 20 milliseconds delay in kind of short corridors that kind of hiding some topology, some 3D meshes from us, and not they kind of not rendered through the GPU and not stored 
uh, in VRAM and uh, yeah in this type of scenarios we even below 20 milliseconds look at our CPU utilization guys below 20% and look at our GPU utilization 95-96% healthy GPU utilization I would, I would call it when it's 97 like right now 97% okay excellent 7 gigabyte of VRAM usage, so you saw the data guys. Let me real quick go ahead and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and switch to 5K resolution like this maxed out, 4K resolution like this maxed out, and 4K res resolution also everything at, uh, no just maxed out, 1080p at everything at maxed out and everything at low because what's the point for you to play 4K resolution everything at low when you can play 1080p resolution everything at low if, if you're that crazy I think, right? So, we can even, I don't think we can apply 8 times MSA, it's probably going to be game over for us because I think it's going to utilize 8000 megabytes of the VRAM, it's probably going to overload our VRAM, but we can use the 5K resolution 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio and we can let me apply it like this without the anti-aliasing and then I'm going to apply with 8 times MSA at 5K resolution. We're going to force the brutal conditions, maximum visuals possible. 8 times MSA, apply it like this. So 5K resolution, everything maxed out, 8 times MSA guys, anti-aliasing, wow, let's go ahead now, look, shall we? Let's have a look at this FPS. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm just curious, what is the 5K at low now? I mean, not at low, but without the anti-aliasing. We're going to play it. And then 4K within the anti-aliasing and without the anti-aliasing. And then 1080p, everything maxed out, 8 times MSA, and then everything at low. And maybe also one thing without the anti-aliasing at 1080p. 85 FPS average, I'm pretty sure it's 85 dash probably 100 FPS average and then milliseconds delay below 20 milliseconds delay excellent I would say even such a comfortable gameplay the system memory utilization 6600 megabytes so the healthy on the VRAM for sure. VRAM utilization even below 6,000 megabytes, which is 5,600 megabytes, as you can see, guys. But however, our CPU utilization increased to 25 average, as you can see. I even saw the 29 percentage average. But this is quad core 8 threads, so we're still kind of utilizing probably two cores fully right now. Or just splitting this instruction between the cores. Still great uh, GPU utilization, guys, at 5K resolution. It's probably because the 8 times MSA, if I'm going to disable the anti-aliasing, is probably going to be horrible. It's probably going to go below 90% GPU utilization. But so far, GPU utilization is excellent. 95% at 5K resolution, come on. In this type of game, can I go? The VM usage 5600 megabytes. Wow, incredible, incredible, guys. I'm impressed. Just want to let you know. Higher CPU utilization, higher temperature on the CPU, as you can see, because we're using more of our CPU, generating more heat. And, but still at 3600, sometimes jumping to 3500 megahertz per core, as you can see. We already uh, thermal throttling by 100 megahertz, as you can see. But 100 megahertz is like maximum one FPS. Not a big deal. The main reason we want to watch out for the we, we don't want to thermal throttling on our GPU in the PC games because this is where the FPS will drop by a lot. Okay, guys, you saw the scenario. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch it. So the average FPS, kind of get yourself a perfect picture of it. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and switch it and I'm going to disable the MSA completely anti-aliasing all the way, but 5K at maximum possible visuals, but without the anti-aliasing. Let's go ahead and play it. Let's go ahead and have a look. As you can see, right? This is the settings. And uh, let's go ahead and have a look like, like, like this right now. I'm loading this game uh, from the mechanical uh, drive, Western Digital. I'm pretty sure SSD drive will have the faster loading speeds and I'm going to replace to two terabyte SSD drive by Crucial guys. Pretty much similar performance to Samsung, but much cheaper and you can save it. Save the money. Crucial is still great. In terms of performance and price, my favorite SSDs. This is kind of I I I have some Samsung A50 Pros, four of them, two terabytes, but uh, so total eight terabytes. But after that, I was buying only Crucials MX500. I think this is the best SSDs ever in terms of performance, quality, durability, and life cycle. Okay, guys, as you can see, the average FPS above 100 FPS, wow, and still great GPU utilization, 93-95%, same almost the GPU utilization as we had with 8 times MSA, maybe we lowered by 1-2% on the GPU utilization, but kind of almost the same. We lowered a lot on our milliseconds delay right now average milliseconds delay 10 milliseconds as you can see the experience is amazing and fps is 105-120 fps average wow we increase on our cpu utilization as you can see and we're going to increase on our cpu utilization at 4k resolution and we're going to utilize our cpu more at 1080p like a lot i think around 60 70 percent probably 1080p Completely my formulas, my methods, my strategy, my techniques, my uh, ideas make sense, as you can see. My formulas in terms of ultra high resolutions and uh, hardware utilization. 41 CPU utilization, wow. All right, guys, we saw it, we saw it, right? In these small corners, as you can see, cor corridors, we have higher FPS and uh, lower GPU utilization because higher FPS and lower latency, of course. Okay, so we saw that. Let's go ahead and switch to 4K resolution without the anti-aliasing first and then with the anti-aliasing. So we want to compare 5K resolution without the anti-aliasing with the 4K without the anti-aliasing. And then we're going to enable the anti-aliasing under the 4K resolution. So here, here we go, guys. 4K resolution, 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio, 3840 pixels by 2160 pixels. Some people call it real 4K. But there is no such a term like that. It's just 16 divided by 9 aspect ratio. Okay. Let me lower the font size and we're going to prepare ourselves to 1080p resolution as well. Even if it's um, a history, in my opinion, but I still want to show it to you guys. Okay, so 4K resolution. Completely maxed out, no anti-aliasing. Let's go ahead and have a look. I'm still recording with the shadow play, but it's about to stop, guys. Hopefully it's going to stop when I'm going to stop. Because if it's going to stop before 1080p, then it's, it's I'm not going to re-record this video. As again, I think we're about one hour for now. Don't forget to smash that like button, guys. My, my voice, as you can see, I'm losing my voice. Support me, subscribe, share it with your friends. A lot of great information if you're looking to build a new PC coming from the experienced PC enthusiast, PC gamer, PC overclocker, software developer, graphic designer, um, hardware engineer, and so much valuable information. Every second, every minute in my videos, I'm producing so much valuable information. Even if you're a beginner, I'm trying to make it like an easy language for you to understand. 
Look at that. Wow. 4K resolution, everything high without the anti-aliasing, 200 FPS average and above. <laughs> wow. Milliseconds delay below 10 milliseconds. Very comfortable, enjoyable, unbelievable experience on the laptop. And keep in mind that to the ASUS GL702VS laptop that I'm running today, you can connect up to three screens, guys, external screens, uh, external devices, external monitors. And, uh, of course, I'm running it today on AK 30 hertz uh, native screen. But it doesn't matter what kind of hertz, 30 hertz, 60 hertz, 120 hertz, 140 hertz. The FPS renders before it's sending the signal to the monitor. Keep that in mind. And FPS will be at any type of hertz monitors will be the same with a similar equipment. Keep that in mind. Hopefully that's, that makes sense, guys. Only on hertz, it will feel smoother in terms of delivery of that render to your eyes through the screen. But if FPS will be 5 FPS average and you're putting under the 120 hertz screen, it's not going to be 120 FPS average. <laughs> it's still going to be 5 FPS average. Look at this. Uh, wow. Even below 5 milliseconds average and latency delay. Above 200 FPS average, I would say one the... Um, it's like 160-210 FPS average. It's kind of jumping, as you can see. It depends like if there is a volumetric particles from the smoke grenades or if it's mm -hmm. small co uh, corridor and stuff like that without a lot of 3D meshes around it. So uh, usage on the VRAM average 3,600 megabytes on a system RAM Average usage will be 6,200 megabytes. Uh, CPU utilization will be a 30-40% uh, utilization, very high. Uh, higher than at AK resolution, as you can see, but not very high. And uh, still, you, you can still play it with just quad-core CPU without the hot trading. So quad-core uh, four threads, and this is the quad-core eight threads. So, um, yeah, and uh, pretty much that's it. GPU utilization is decreased by about 2%, as you can see. So it will be average 92-95. Uh, even sometimes lowering a little bit lower than that to, as you saw, to 71 to 83 percent. All right, guys, pretty much that's it. Now, now 4K with 8 times MSA. I'm just curious. I'm pretty sure we're going to utilize our GPU to 97 percent, and we're going to release the stress from the CPU. And FPS probably will be a little bit lower than we just saw, but by a little bit, but not that too much. Because this Pascal GPU architecture will handle it easily. Because it's going to stress the GPU better than it was stressing on the 4K without the anti-aliasing. Okay, okay, took it fast, wow. So everything maxed out, 8 times MSA, 4K resolution, let's go ahead and play it. Let's go ahead and have a look, shall we guys? Wow, look at that. Still above 120 FPS average. Above 120 FPS average, guys. 4K with 8 times MSA. Can't I go? Wow, on the GTX 1070 video card. Similar performance to the GTX 1070 desktop version or any laptop equipped with GTX 1070, guys. Pretty much most of them will have the 7th generation Core i7-7700HQ CPUs. Some of them will have like 6700 CPUs, so you will be like 2-3 FPS lower. And some of them will have 8th generation Core i7 CPUs. And on the 8th generation Core i7 CPUs, you will be like 2-3 FPS higher. Keep that in mind from the result that you can see it right now. Okay, average FPS will be, I would say, 125-160 FPS average. So jumping, as you can see. And uh, 
VRAM utilization 4500 megabytes, so 4.5 gigabytes of the VRAM utilization, and the system RAM utilization is 6200 megabytes, guys. Look at that low latency delay, below 10 milliseconds, even with the 8 times MSAA. Staying an average of 6 milliseconds. This is amazing. Of latency delay. Amazing experience, guys. Wow. Wow, that, that was really great. So right now, we're going to go ahead and switch, guys to uh, low. I just want to show you how 4K at low, just in case for those fakes. And uh, the CPU utilization, as you saw, was above 40% average. So not above, I mean 30-40% average percentage on the CPU utilization. So right now we're going to go ahead and make 4K resolution everything at, at lowest possible settings without the anti-aliasing of course and then same settings at 1080p and then 1080p maxed out and we're good to go here we go and apply this type of settings guys taking longer as you can see to apply hopefully we are here Come on, come on, look at that little icon at the left top, the NVIDIA Shadow Play icon. Check that icon at 12K resolution, how small it was. This is for naysayers when they kind of come up with all kind of solutions that is not disturbing their uh, poor reality. But you want to, guys, keep moving and you want to bring the better things into your life. 4K resolution, everything at low, guys, no anti-aliasing. Let's go ahead and have a look. I'm just going to reload it real quick and uh, then 1080p next. Same at, at this very low settings and then 1080p maxed out and game over. And then PC hardware. Um, reviewing this laptop and we're going to be over, guys with this video long video I lost my voice don't forget to like commenting over one hour in real time I'm not reading this information and at the same time watching what I'm watching keeping my eye at the left top and commenting with this such a useful information guys and yeah it's hard not easy don't forget to check 16K resolution on a single RTX 2080 Ti video that I recorded in 2018 on the AK native uh, screen and 16K DSR downscale to AK native screen. It's going to be amazing because it was rendered in real time 16K resolution. Like today, every single resolution that you saw was rendered in real time, guys. As well as on a single Titan RTX. 16K resolution and two uh, RTX 2080 Ti and SLI 16K resolution can show go and two Titan RTXs and SLI can show go at 16K resolution. Those type of videos will be insane. Like, oh my god, amazing. Okay, well, 4K low probably increase on our CPU utilization by a couple percent. Uh, the system RAM utilization or system RAM usage, guys, is almost below 6,000 megabytes, so below 6 gigabytes. As you can see right now, it's 6,100 megabytes system RAM utilization or system RAM usage. VRAM usage is 3,100 megabytes. Wow. And uh, the average FPS is such a crazy FPS. I would say um, 185-240 FPS average probably. The latency delay average will be below 5 milliseconds. Wow! Incredible experience. Below 10 milliseconds latency delay on 60 hertz monitors, guys, feels like almost like 120 hertz uh, experience. When your latency delay on 60 hertz monitor below 5 milliseconds. 
Wow, 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 wow. Above 200 FPS average, as you can see right now. 220 FPS, wow. And this is the single GTX 1070 video cards, Pascal GP architecture, guys. That was available for us for sale in the end of 2016. Amazing, amazing. All right, good to go, guys. Let's go ahead and keep moving. We cannot watch this video for a long time. We don't have the whole day. Uh, I, I just gotta provide you the valuable information and keep moving forward with more videos. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and switch to 1080p and let's see what will be the difference. 1080p at 4K, at everything low. I'm just curious. Let's go ahead and apply this. Okay, so guys, this is 1080p, guys. Everything at low, as you can see. Let's go ahead and play the game. And then 1080p maxed out and good to go. I review all kind of uh, resolutions, guys all the way up to 12k resolution the first laptop video in 12k resolution you saw today of construct go in 2018 this is the first world's first 12k resolution rendered in real time uploaded to the youtube for everyone to watch this is incredible and I think maybe Pascal GP architecture I saw during the Turing GP architecture RTX 2080 Ti and RTX 2080 Ti and SLI video in Constructor 16K resolution. I, I told you guys that there is a possibility that Pascal GP architecture cannot render Constructor Go at 16K resolution. And it could be the case, but I still think right now 70% that if Pascal GP architecture will have 12 gigabyte of VRAM such as Titan RTX, Titan XP, uh, which, is, which is Pascal GP architecture, I think 12 gigabyte of VRAM will help it to run, to to render, not to run, to render this game and to run this game at 16K resolution. I still believe so. I, I still believe that Pascal GP architecture can render, can check go at 16K resolution with Titan XP's guys. And especially with two Titan XP's in the slide, I think your FPS at 16K resolution will be like 60 FPS average at least. And maxed out without the anti-aliasing. Or maybe 40 FPS for sure. I, I think it's 69 with the Turing's, with the two RTX 2080 Ti, but 11 gigabyte is, it could be a, a problem. So we're going to see, I didn't see yet the two Titans RTX in the line can should go at 16 K resolution, but it's going to be a great video to see that. All right, guys, system RAM utilization is 6,000 megabytes on the average. Uh, the uh, delay below five milliseconds latency delay amazing nice great uh average fps 250 to 60 fps average as you can see i would say 200 dash to 60 fps average and um the vram utilization 2500 megabytes on average as you can see beautiful uh gpu utilization of course very bad we only utilizing 30% on average of our CUDA cores and 70% is waste of every second in this game. 70% of waste this 1080p on the GTX 1070 video card. So, uh, yeah, and CPU utilization, I thought it's going to be 60% or 70%, but it's not the case. It's as high as it was at 4K resolution. So it's kind of... 35-40% of the CPU utilization or CPU usage at 1080p. I thought it was going to be higher than that, honestly, with you. All right, and we're done here. Let's go ahead now and switch it to um, completely maxed out with, with anti-aliasing all the way. Because if you're playing this game on the 75-inch or 85-inch TV and you decided to go ahead and play 1080p, most likely you want to enable the anti-aliasing. And this is what we're going to do. But I'm not advising you to play it with GTX 1070 at 1080p because you're going to waste, as you saw, 
grade 60 percent of your CUDA course for nothing they're not going to be utilized switch it to 4k resolution at least guys uh, let's do without the anti-aliasing and then with the anti-aliasing and it's going to be complete of this video completely everything is uh, covered guys okay let, let's go ahead and now look 1080p look at this take some times from low to high so everything maxed out without the anti-aliasing 1080p As you can see, okay, I just woke up. As again, I'm not going to edit this video, guys. I'm going to upload it the way it is. And let's go ahead and have a look, shall we? Okie dokie. I don't like that NVIDIA technology cannot be utilized at the lower resolutions pretty, pretty well. And... Uh, this is, could be an issue, guys, of internal GPU architectures by NVIDIA. That that means that NVIDIA is focused to 4K resolution and above, and that completely makes sense. And as you can see, their technology since Pascal GPU, since Maxwell GPU architecture, I would say, ready for the 8K resolution. Especially since Maxwell GPU architecture, when we're talking Titan X Maxwell GPU architectures with 12 gigabyte of VRAM, frame buffer, it was ready and four video cards in this slide. I hope that the next generation of NVIDIA video cards, NVIDIA going to make four-way SLI. And if they will do, then it means the 16K resolution will be available at us over 60 FPS almost at if the next generation after the Turing GP architecture will support four-way SLI guys it means that 16k resolution will be available with that GP architecture at 60 FPS and above in any games released in, in, in any games in 2020 and I believe the next GPU architecture by NVIDIA will be in the end of 2020, like in October, something like that. Or maybe it's going to be in 2021, but in to, then in 2020 they will re release the RTX 2080 Ti Super. And I hope that RTX 2080 Ti Super video card will support 16 gigabyte of VRAM. Then it's going to be Gucci, guys. All what we need to have to play games at six above 8K resolution comfortably is 16K, 16 gigabyte of VRAM. But as again, we're going to find out when I'm going to load the Matrix Sodos at 10K, 12K resolution on two Titan RTXs. We're going to find out how much VRAM that puppy, that kind of PC game will utilize above 8K resolution. I'm just curious. Because Metro Exodus is supporting the SLI like a king, but you gotta uh, modify the executable file. And I'm going to create the tutorial with two Titan RTXs how to do so. Because you saw my videos, two RTX 2080 Ti and SLI Metro Exodus and was utilizing in 8K resolution like a chocolate candy okay guys average fps as you can see with the 1080p everything how everything maxed out without the 